Hey everyone! I thought we could chat a little bit today. I have my coffee cup here and hopefully the reflection is not too horrible on my glasses. I do apologize, but without them I feel naked and half blind. <laughs> so, no, my number is not that high, but yeah, anyway. Um, I... Okay, this is going to be probably a little bit complicated video, so bear with me. I also want to, you know, put a disclaimer that I don't know everything. I make mistakes all the time. I try to do better, and this is what I want to kind of talk about in this video. So, what prompted it was actually responses that I got on my AliExpress haul that I posted a few weeks ago and if you're not familiar AliExpress is kind of like a Chinese Amazon I want to say I have only ordered it from them a few times and that um, haul was the first time that I ordered from them and what I ordered was uh, mostly like stickers and washi tape and that was the first time I ordered. I've seen on YouTube like lots of AliExpress hauls and um, when I went to the website I was, you know, really impressed and excited because there were like a lot of stickers and washi tape in uh, cheaper prices than what I'm used to. Definitely what uh, cheaper than I can get here in Europe. I'm in Austria in case you don't know by now. Hi. And... Um, so yeah, I ordered and I've seen other hauls and sometimes I re read the comments. I didn't notice anything kind of out of the ordinary. And then after I posted my video, I got a few responses um, telling me that all the like designs or not all the designs but like in AliExpress it's very common to find uh, stolen designs and um, yeah and a lot of people don't uh, buy from them and um, yeah and most of the comments were well almost like all of them were actually you know just that's what I know you know you should consider this uh, I did have one person that um, wrote me that she's unsubscribing because of this and and yeah and first of all I want to thank everyone everyone that um, wrote me um, one uh, viewer like DM'd me like just sent me a personal message and I want to thank you all because I don't know everything and I'm not aware of every problem issue out there. I admit I didn't do a ton of research and also, you know, my excuse for this um, faux pas, let's say, is that um, it's not something like the prices for me didn't seem, you know, too cheap. For what it was and also I have purchased in the past like a lot of uh, digital files like you know graphics and that sort of thing with like a full commercial license so that means you can kind of manipulate them and then um, make whatever products you want in unlimited quantities and like sell them so the whole thing didn't smell fishy to me at all and I really didn't think this was an issue. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about this kind of, kind of like a discussion or something like this, because I think, first of all, like the first comments that I got, I admit I was like, I got defensive because I think every person that kind of tries to do okay or, you know, tries to be a good person, if someone tells him, you know, you're doing something like bad, this is not good, you're supporting something not good, your first reaction is like, what? Why? No, <laughs> it can't be. So I think 
my point is that, you know, while we should absolutely address all these issues and share the information that we have with each other, we should also we should do this first of all in a kind way because you know it's possible that people are not aware of certain things and i i agree that ignorance is not you know you can't claim ignorance about everything but there are certain things that just like people are just not aware of and i think i can give you examples that are closer to my personal place or journey in my life we'll get to that soon and i'm aware that people don't know the whole story so i try if i say something i try to be kind about it and also the second thing is that it's i think we should also search for some sort of proof so while i'm sure everyone has good intentions and a lot of people know what they're talking about it's also, you know, I don't think we should make like this statement because we read something somewhere. Um, so I looked a little bit into this whole AliExpress thing. I admit I didn't go really, like I didn't really dive deep because at the end of the day, it's, you know, stickers and washi tape. It's not like food that I need to survive. And I thought okay like for now I just I can search for other places that might be um more I don't want to say worthy of my money because I also I I want to believe that not every single seller on AliExpress that sells like stickers and washi tape I'm talking about things that have um you know like artwork in them or some sort of like graphic files or something um I'd like to think they're not all, you know, cheating and stealing designs. And I'm sure a lot of them are legitimate people trying to make a living. Maybe some of them are also ignorant to the fact that, you know, whatever they're using might have been created by an artist. And I know the whole copyright issues is like a big mess when it comes to China. I actually, the way that I heard about it is I have an acquaintance who is now like a world-renowned uh, nature photographer and I know he posted that his photos were kind of, you know, published in like Chinese magazines without any credit and it's very hard to, um, to make people there accountable because of like laws and stuff. I really don't know, but... Um, yeah, so, you know, I can't imagine that every store that sells stickers is doing something wrong. But then on the other hand, I can accept that because it's so difficult to tell which ones are stealing designs and which ones are not, for some people, it's just easier to to just buy stickers from other places probably pay more for them but then again it's not like a, a necessity you know so that was that and I thought this was like a good opportunity to um, talk a bit about things that I no longer buy and explain my reasons for that and maybe raise a few issues here that maybe you're not aware of and hopefully you know we can have a uh, like a fruitful discussion, uh, definitely a civilized discussion. I want to say I have a zero tolerance policy for mean comments, you know, bullying, all those things. So I just delete those comments without thinking twice. Uh, so don't waste your <laughs> time writing something nasty because it won't uh, be posted here. Uh, so please, I, I would love to hear your opinion. I would love to hear your tips on what you think are the most ethical choices and um yeah let's talk about this let's raise awareness for things that maybe you know maybe i know something about a certain topic and you know more about the other and uh, hopefully this can be a helpful video or 
um, at least make you think a little bit and you know I'm really always always open for discussion and learning I call myself the eternal student and yeah so I want to talk to you about a few things I no longer buy and explain my reasons for that so number one and two it's kind of together I no longer buy for my craft and art space paper towels and wet wipes and the reason for that is uh, environmental I um, not create but I have so much waste as it is um, with you know working with stickers and papers and all those things and I really really want to reduce it and one of the ways that I found um, that I can do that in my art room I'm just talking now about you know art supplies and and that sort of, and like tools and that sort of thing I do this also in other areas of my life but this is not what this video is about so I stopped uh, buying those things to reduce my waste and what I'm using is these um, I have lots of these because I have a three-year-old and when she was smaller you know we used these to wipe snot and drool and <laughs> food and all those lovely things so I have a ton of these um, and that's what I use to wipe things to clean things I also have my desk is lined with this kind of newsprint paper so I can wipe their, you know, clean extra paint and that sort of thing. And I can actually reuse this, although I admit I haven't been very good with doing that. Uh, but I hope to do so in the future. I also just cut up like smaller pieces of these. And that's what I use instead of wet wipes, instead of paper towels. And I admit that 99% of the time I don't miss it. I've been using these for probably like a year now and it's working really well for me I don't feel the need for those other uh, wasteful products so that was one very positive change that was kind of easy to make moving on to the next that is um, natural hair or animal hair brushes now this is connected to my veganism or being vegan and if you're not aware I will put the definition of veganism uh, here so when I became vegan a year and a half ago I think the easiest change for me personally was uh, food like avoiding uh, animal products that meat meat dairy and eggs and what I found more challenging because I really had to do more research was to switch my, you know, skincare and makeup to cruelty free and vegan and um, my art supplies. So it turns out that now I want to say like I'm not perfect and um, what I have that I bought before I still continue to use and enjoy. I figure the damage is done and there is no point of getting rid of these things now but I do my best to purchase now only vegan art supplies and um, tools so I will try to put below I think it's just like so much information to get into I'll try to put below as much information as I can that is kind of concise and useful to you um, basically the you know the ethics behind being vegan is that animals are not here for us and we shouldn't exploit them and use them and I admit that I really enjoy using my natural hair brushes and I, I still use them but I don't want to support uh, these industries and it's kind of it goes similar to the Aliexpress thing while I would like to think that some manufacturers of natural hair, animal hair brushes, you know, have these wonderful facilities where the animals are taken really, you know, great care of and they get to live their life fully and not die before they're 
natural life, you know, span. And I don't know, the, the hair is gathered from the floor and I, I really doubt that it is like that. I understand that maybe with some animals um, it can be better, but something like a wild animal, I think like a squirrel, which is really like squirrel hair is kind of the top choice for watercolor brushes. I can't imagine that these animals <laughs> live nicely. I think it's quite the contrary and because I can't tell that for sure I avoid all of this again going back to the belief that animals are not here for us to use now if I found like a dead squirrel in my garden and I knew a brush maker then yes I would consider um, donating the bot I'm sorry I'm laughing it's not it's not a funny topic I mean I, I actually take this very very seriously but you know, there's always people that come with these scenarios like if you were alone on an island with a chicken, would you kill the chicken? And I'm not talking about survival situations here. I'm talking about um, luxuries uh, for the most part and choices that we can make. Now, when it comes to brushes, synthetic is actually also a cheaper and more affordable uh, choice. So for me, it's kind of a win-win. You know, it is more ethical according to my ethics and more affordable. And I will uh, put links below to my favorite synthetic brushes. I have some that perform really well. Uh, for me, the challenge is it's less the kind of more, um, you know, springy brushes with stiff bristles. It's more the soft ones and the natural hairs really do perform beautifully and they um, you can get a lot of like pigment and um, and water in them but there are also really great synthetic alternatives and I really believe that's the way that we should go and that brings me to paint so I'm kind of talking about the big triad here of watercolors because that's mainly what I use so that's brushes paint and paper um, paint Thankfully, there are really great vegan options out there and unfortunately my some of my favorite brands, my number one favorite brand, Schminke, their artist grade um, formula is not vegan and I don't buy that anymore. So I buy now either Daniel Smith or Holbein. Again, I try to, I'm not exactly sure where they get their products. Um, if it's like a byproduct of the animal industry, uh, like the animal agriculture, meat industry or something, and, you know, it's like more sustainable to use it in paint because otherwise it would go to waste. For some people that would be an ethical choice and I'm not judging here, I'm just saying that for me, even if that is a byproduct of the meat industry, I don't want to support that because I also, you know, I want to spend my money, my dollars, my euros in the most ethical way that I see. And, you know, supporting even a byproduct means that it's more uh, profitable to use animals. So, so yes, I stopped buying uh, watercolors that have um, ox gall, I want to say that's how it's uh, pronounced. And even honey, honey is kind of like a bit uh, debatable topic because, you know, we can't really force bees to make honey. So we're not um, kind of like torturing them or something, but we are exploiting them. They don't make honey for us, they make honey for themselves. And again, you don't have to agree with what I'm saying, but for me, I try now to, um, to do what I think is right for me and for the world around me. Again, I'm far from perfect and just by living we cause damage. When I drive my car, I kill bugs and, um, you know, electricity line kills birds and all kinds of things. But there are things that we can do to reduce. And it's, 
for me like saying there's no point and you know we cause damage anyway so why do anything it's why do anything why do anything about anything you know also um cars you know people get killed in car accidents every single day so what we shouldn't wear car seats uh like seat belts we shouldn't try to make cars safer you know we should always try to be better and just because we have um we produce waste then shouldn't we recycle shouldn't we try to reduce like all these things yes everything makes a difference every choice that you make makes a difference that's what i believe in and one person can make a difference and i can see that all around me with people that have influenced me and touched my life even if they are on the other side of the world through art through youtube videos through vegan recipes it's just we can all try and do better and yeah so paint <laughs> paper paper also a lot of watercolor paper uses uh, gelatin for sizing which is a part of the process of creating watercolor paper but there are a lot of really great options that are completely vegan and do not use uh, animal products again I'm not sure if like gelatin you know it's made from like boiled bones I'm guessing it's something we have a plethora of um, left over from the meat industry but again I don't want to make that uh, industry more profitable I prefer to support uh, brands that don't uh, exploit animals so that means I had to check all the papers I will put a link of um, what I found what I use for reference and I try to double check it um, because you know one website doesn't necessarily have all the answers and even for like Daniel Smith I heard um, like I heard contradiction contradicting opinions but from what I have seen and I have checked um, I consider the brand vegan with the exception of like a few paints that use like charred bones or something um, I did think, I think I bought uh, one of the new greys. I think that has that in it. I admit I didn't check. I admit I make these mistakes um, and I try to check. And every time I remind myself that I really have to um, do my best to check. And also stuff, for example, that I get um, like free stuff to test. Um, I... I got last year was it the Paul Rubens brushes I love them they're beautiful but they're made of animal hair and I should have asked them and now when Arteza uh, reached out to me hopefully those videos are coming soon uh, some just product reviews I asked and they said like the contact person that contacted me said that all their products are uh, cruelty free vegan and um non-toxic non-toxic i know untoxic is not a word <laughs> they are not toxic so i was really happy you know this time i remember to check and i will do that um every time from now on if uh, a company approaches me because i don't want to get um things that i wouldn't buy myself for ethical reasons um, paper brings me also also to a bit of a sore topic and again I kind of get annoyed with myself for feeling this way about something that is really not a necessity but journals so sketchbooks my favorite sketchbooks have also animal products in them so what I'm thinking is I'm hoping that I will now I have a lot of like loose sheets of paper that I bought like years ago and I didn't go through because I prefer uh, painting in art journals and um, just to go back like Cuddy, Stillman and Burn, those are my two favorite ones in the last couple of years. They're both not vegan. So what I'm going to do is hopefully I'm going to try and um, bind my own watercolor sketchbooks I know there are lots of uh, online tutorials and I think I can do it and that's what I want to do for both of those reasons because I don't want to buy uh, sketchbooks that are not vegan and also because I want to use what I have you know that's another thing if if you care about the environment and 
just trying to use what you have and not waste things. So I want to do that. And also uh, sketchbooks, I'm now working in the Arteza one, which um, full review hopefully coming soon. And this is an A4 size one. It's um, It has like this lovely canvas cover, which I really like. And... Um, according to the person that reached out to me, these are vegan, so yay. <sighs> this was long. Um, okay, another thing I want to say, and this is connected more to um, just trying not to be wasteful, <laughs> is something else I stopped buying, for the most part, um, is kind of basic sets of watercolors. Now, this is a little bit a problematic um, issue, I consider. It's kind of complicated because being on YouTube and, you know, teaching online and being on social media, this is how I make my, you know, this is how I make a living. This is how I earn money. And the most popular videos on my channel are product reviews. So, on one hand, I understand that it would probably be profitable to me to review as many products as I can. On the other hand, I don't... A few things here. First of all, I don't want to buy things that I know I won't be able to use or that I already have versions of that I'm happy with. And that uh, one example for me, like the top example for me for that, are kind of basic watercolor sets, you know, the ones that you just get with um, a selection of colors that the company chose. I have so many watercolors. I now use watercolors from a tube. I have curated palettes with colors that work for me that I love. And I don't want to buy um, these ready-made palettes that have colors that I know I won't use. So while I would like to try everything so I can, you know, share my opinion and help people make their own decisions and find sets that work for them and hopefully help people save money. I know I always watch YouTube um, reviews before I buy anything. I'm aware of how helpful it is. But for me personally, I'm just not... I'm not convinced that this is something I should put more like time and effort into. The second aspect of that is that I also, while I'm quite guilty of, you know, wanting all the paints, wanting all the colors, shopping, collecting, and having probably more than I can ever use, uh, I mean, in art supplies, I am not sure that I want to encourage this kind of consumerism and I, I don't want people to come to my channel and just see all the time new stuff, new stuff, new stuff and think that they have to buy that new stuff so they can make great art. I really want you to come here and, you know, escape a little bit, enjoy, feel inspired and feel inspired to use what you have because I know while a lot of you uh, don't have a lot of art supplies. Some of you also have quite a nice collection already and I really would like to focus on using what we have, making the most of what we have and not focusing on the products but more on the process and just, you know, the wonderful therapeutic effects that uh, arting and art journaling has. So that's like a different aspect of it. Um, Having said that, I do think that certain things are worth um, making the effort, at least for me, to uh, hunt down or buy. And one example that I can think of that I actually didn't buy, I might buy, um, buy it when I go to the States. I'm uh, going to the States in the summer. My brother now lives in California and we're all flying there to visit him and his family. Um, I saw this new set of paints by, I'll put a picture here, the name escapes me, but the set was curated by um, a really great uh, YouTube creator here on YouTube, and I think was it in liquid color? 
I don't know, I have brain fog right now. It's probably because I'm only three sips into my coffee. Of course, it's with uh, oat milk. And um, so she curated this set of watercolors. Again, it's like a curated set. From what I see, you know, it has colors that I'm kind of convinced I won't get much use of. But what I love about this set is that it is vegan and it is environmentally friendly. Uh, that's another aspect of watercolors. I didn't really get into this, but I want to do a little bit more research into the cobalt and the cadmiums. I love those uh, pigments, especially the cobalts. But from what I, what I understand, they are a little bit, um, or a lot, I'm not sure. Again, I have to check this. They are harmful to the environment. I'm guessing when, you know, you flush down your, like, dirty water uh, with these pigments and it goes into our water reservoirs. Again, I'm not sure. But uh, I know these are problematic and you shouldn't ingest them. So I have to look into that. But her set is uh, also environmentally friendly. And I think that's something I would really want to support. So that, for example, is a set, even though it's expensive, it's like $100. That is something I would like to try. Uh, first of all, to support the brand and support this um, initiative or this theme and also to test it and see if it performs as well or better than other similar sets that are not vegan and have maybe harmful um, pigments in them. So that's an example of something that I would like to support even if I don't uh, need it. I don't need more watercolors. <laughs> okay, let's put this baby to bed. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments what you think and I would also really love to know what are your um, choices or habits that you have um, to make, you know, to make us better and to harm the environment and the world around us less. So I'm really looking forward to that and yeah, I'll see you in the comments. Like, subscribe, all those things. Have a great day. Bye.